Thoth was an immortal. That is, he had conquered death, passing only when he willed, and even then not through death. His vast wisdom made him ruler of the various Atlantean colonies, including the ones in South and Central America. In this incarnation, he left the writings known to modern occultists as the Emerald Tablets. During later ages, the ego of Thoth passed into the bodies of men in the manner described in the tablets. I walk across vast deserts, samsaric pasts and presents, unlocking grasp vestiges of knowledge massed forever, bask in their essence as I master prescience. I laugh at nescience, it cannot reach me. I talk with ETs, speak freedom for the meek and the needy. I wrought this for the wisdom god like Enki, it was Thoth who sent me. I was taught by entities of forgotten realms, Atlantis army sentry, I cast Coptic spells. When I speak with ghastly enemies that walk through hell's bottles You spell sorrow if you write against me Whether you spite or befriend me, I'll act the same Respect your path and plane, but my math is plain You can't counter it, my span's mountain All is mind is the first universal principle of nature, of manifestation And that is because all other universal principles rely on it and are within it and most times when you hear somebody speak of a universal principle, they conflate it. They think things like, that shall not kill is a universal principle. The universal principle denotes it exists everywhere in the universe at all times. So all is mind is the first universal principle. And it's really hard to understand because the ordinary man thinks mind is usually understood as the non-tangible objects that exist within the head that we experience. But we'll see, mind as I speak of it and mind as it is, is all the movements of life. So we'll look at it from two separate ways, from the worldly view, the scientific view, and also from the spiritual view in the knowledge of self view. So what does it mean that all is mind? There was a Zen Buddhist who once asked his student, what is moving the flag? Is it the wind or is it mind? And for the ordinary man, he would say the wind is what is moving the flag. But for those who seek deeper know what actually moves that flag. Because mind is the living force of our manifestation. Mind is that which blows the wind, which grows plants, which makes minerals coalesce and come together, that allow rocks to be, that allow the forces of nature to move and be. Mind is the force which causes all manifestation to move and act. Thus it is our mind. It doesn't matter if it's organic or inorganic. All matter and all appearances are mind. Well, someone will ask, how can mind be in a rock or in electricity or in heat or in wind or in steel or iron well let's look at it from the scientific point of view all forms of energy that come about are caused by vibration right the vibration of particles well what causes the vibration the motion of the particles but what causes the motion of the particles the attraction and repulsion between them. So what causes, this, what causes this attraction and repulsion between particles? It's the likes or dislikes. And this is why it is necessary to know man, because you will see the same thing that moves you, moves the atoms, moves particles. As one of the the universal principle states, as above, so below. It works for all things in existence. That's why it's universal. So what causes the motion of the particles is, 
or the, what causes this attraction and repulsion between particles is its pleasure or its revulsion to other particles. It's love or hate, as we can put it, or like it and dislike. What is what particles is comfortable around, it'll attract to and vibrate with, and what it is uncomfortable with, it will repulse. And so the perception or the experience of sensation and a response to it is nothing other than mind. Matter doesn't do this. Mind does this. So for the particle, the ability to perceive or and receive sensation and respond to it is a manifestation of mind. And so this response to it is what we would call will and desire. It desires to attract to certain particles and repulse others. Will and desire are mental attributes. So, when the particle feels the presence of another particle and being attracted or repulsive to it is mental, which, again, it shows will and desire. And this repulsion or attraction to it is that which causes the motion of the particles, right? And this motion of the particles causes the vibration, which vibration causes all forms of energy in manifestation. So from the scientific view, we can see that all is mind. I like to take the more experiential stance to see that in your own experience, this is the case. What we know of the universe, what we call the world, the universe, is only known to us by our five sense perceptions. Feeling, hearing, seeing, tasting, and smelling. And so when we say we hear the chirping of a bird, it's not the, the chirping of the bird doesn't reside in the bird. The hearing of chirping resides in, or the sound of chirping resides in hearing itself. Because without hearing, there is no chirping of a bird. Seeing a tomato Seeing the redness of a tomato, the redness cannot be in the object called tomato itself because color or redness is in the experience of seeing. Seeing is what paints all the objects their different colors. It's not the object has redness inherent of itself. Seeing adds the color to experience. And not only that, seeing is what projects the scene. Seeing and seeing are not two things, as I've stated in the past. And so, what we call the universe and the world are made of the five senses. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching. Now, has anyone ever experienced a world independent of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, or touching? No. Can anyone experience a world independent of these senses? If you take away seeing, you can still experience the world of hearing, feeling, smelling, and tasting. So you know there's still an experience of what we call the world without seeing. But take away all five of them. Is there a world to experience? And where do these Five senses, what are they made of? What do they take place? They take place in the mind. They are mental perceptions. Not to be confused with the mental perceptions we talk about when we see objects of thought. So are objects made of what we call, in science calls, dead matter that has no life to it? Or is it this vibration? that appears as all the objects in existence. And you will never find the dividing line between mind and matter. Because mind and matter are essentially one, just different degrees of the same thing. Everything is living 
and full of life. Yet our thoughts and the way we perceive tell us, no, this is dead inert stuff. Made of matter. And just as mind and matter are one thing essentially, different degrees, so is seeing something and the thing that is seen. It is one thing. So if seeing resides in the mind and the thing seen cannot be seen independent of seeing, it is essentially one. Because for something to exist independent, that would mean it would be two. But seeing is accompanied by seeing and vice versa because it, is, because it is essentially one thing. And it's the same with hearing and the heard. They're both, they're one, one thing. The hearing and the heard are essentially one that exists in mind. It is mind's activity. The same with smelling and the smelt, tasting and the tasted, feeling and the felt. It all resides and it is all an activity of mind. The movements of life are mind's activity. The universal mind's activity. So when the Zen Buddhist asks his students, what is moving the flag? The wind or mind? All is mind. So we must see that the world and that which we call the universe, that, there, that this is actually a construct of the mind. Again, even when we look at conventional thought, they would tell us, the conventional worldview tells us that this data that appears to come from outside is interpreted through our brain. And what we see is an image. It's an imagination. It's solely in mind. This is what we see, the universe, even from the conventional standpoint. But they believe there's something out there that projects this. But even what we call the brain appears in mind. So it cannot be the source of the appearance, if that makes sense. It's like saying the TV screen can appear in the movie. No, the screen is the source of the appearance of the movie. So you'll never find a TV screen that is presenting the movie in the movie. So we must come to see that all is mine. This is the first universal principle. No matter which way you dissect it. It's a, a total construct of the mind. So with that, peace.